Well, good morning. Welcome to Christ Community Church. I'm Pastor John, and I'm so glad to have you join us once again this week because church has now moved outside of the building. We are the church. And last weekend, it was said that the church broke the Internet, that so many people were, were tuned in, into church online that it took everybody by surprise. And so I'm so glad that you're logging in with us this morning to worship with us and to celebrate the goodness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the living God in our confidence in uncertain times. In fact, if you've had have the opportunity to pick up and read the Emmitsburg News Journal this, is this April, Check out my article in the Pastor's Corner because it's entitled Confidence in Uncertain Times. And I, I know it's going to be a source of encouragement to you. Speaking of encouragement, let, let's pray together as we, as we fix our eyes on Jesus and begin to worship together. Father, we do thank you so much that you are a kind and loving and gracious Father. And that we can come to you as your children to find comfort and strength in the midst of our storms. God, we thank you that you're, you're a God according to your word who loves us and, and that being the everlasting God, that you humbled yourself and, and took on the form of a human being, that you walked this earth and you lived the only perfect righteous life that's ever been lived. Also that you could go to the cross and there on that cross you took upon yourself our sin. In a demonstration of your great love for us, you died there, Lord God. You, you took the penalty for the sin that we deserved. And yet that wasn't the end of the story. The, the, the grave couldn't contain you. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you've risen from the dead and your spirit is with us here today. I pray that as, as we worship you today, that we would experience your love, your grace, and your forgiveness like never, never before. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together. Church, we can't wait to worship with you this morning. Stand up wherever you are, join in, and let's sing to the Lord. Feed me. 
God, as every step of the way, we know that you are always with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Hallelujah. God, you are so worthy. Thank you, Lord, that we are yours and you are mine. God, your word says, mm. but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, he who formed you, says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you and I have summoned you by name and you are mine. And when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Thank you, God. He's coming on the cross. The kings, the kingdoms will Make way for the King of Kings. The God. 
God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, a lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting a battle. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is a lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee. Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's a roaring in power and fighting a battle. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee. Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is a lion, a lion of Judah. Roaring in power and fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is a Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, every knee will bow before the Lion. I don't know about you, but it gives me great comfort to know that nothing is impossible for our God. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Whom shall I fear but God alone? Thank you, Lord, that you are sovereign over all, that we can call out the name of Jesus and darkness trembles. We can call out the name of Jesus and it has to flee. Darkness has to flee in the presence of the Lord. And when we are saved, when we give our lives to Jesus, that power and authority rests within us. Thank you, Lord, 
that we can now come together as a church online and call out the name of Jesus and darkness trembles all across the world darkness flees at the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah
thank you, Lord, that we can call on the name of Jesus. And church, I pray wherever you are worshiping right now, that you would call on the name of Jesus. Because when we call on the name of Jesus, his perfect love casts out all fear. He comes to you and he says, cast all your anxieties on me. Because he cares for you. Because he loves you. Because he's a good father. He cares about his children. And he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's telling you to call out his name. Call out the name of his son, Jesus, and say, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. You silence every fear, every lie of the enemy that he has been telling me. You silence it. So we're going to call on the name of Jesus. We're going to say, Jesus, you are over all. Right now, we are giving, we, we are having the mind of Jesus. He gives us that power and that authority. When we call on his name, when we are rescued and saved, he gives us that power and authority to cast out the lies of the devil in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your beautiful presence here, Lord. Thank you for your beautiful presence. We're going to keep praising you, Lord. Because when we, when we praise your name, God, when we praise your name, when we lift our eyes to heaven, God, and you, Lord, Lord, you look down on us and you smile. You are so happy with us when we praise you. I thank you, Lord, that we can come and we can worship at your throne. We can worship at your throne. We can worship at your throne. Thank you. 
so much. We love to lift you up. I thank you, Lord, that we have this time together to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Thank you for meeting us here. Thank you for your presence. God, I pray a blessing over those who are watching at home, and I pray, Lord, that they would feel your presence now as we move into this time in your word, that you would press upon their hearts, Lord, exactly what you're trying to speak to them today. God, that they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are hearing from their creator and Lord. Speak to hearts today, God. Move. Hallelujah. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Our God is, is great and he's worthy of our praise. Because he's gone to, to great measures to assure that we would spend eternity with him. That's such, such a blessing. And we, we join with the psalmist praising him in Psalm chapter 118, where it says, Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The, the Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord God and Father, we do thank you for giving us a, a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We're, we're so thankful that in him, that we are loved, that we're, we're healed, forgiven, and restored. God, we thank you and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. As, as we continue to worship, I, I want to give you an opportunity to, to worship with your, your tithes and offerings. Because as, as we're worshiping together in a, in a, in a, in a digital format, meeting online, the, the simplest way to give is to, is to click the button on your screen. But, but you can also mail it to the church's physical address at 303 West Lincoln Avenue, Emmitsburg, Maryland, 21727. And so no matter how you give, we do appreciate your faithful support. And as we give our tithes and offerings, the scriptures encourage us. Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze. And so, Father, as we give, we're, we're celebrating a biblical principle of sowing and reaping. We're storing up treasures in heaven and we're trusting you for more and more because you've promised to throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that we, we wouldn't have room enough for it. And so we, we thank you for your faithfulness and ask you to receive these gifts this morning as a, as a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to you in Christ. Pour out your grace, letting us now and always be channels of your grace in our community and in the world as you use these gifts for your church, your kingdom, and your glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. God, we praise you and give you all the glory as we, as we make this transition into our teaching time, getting into your word. We, we bless you, asking that, that we would be able to receive that word today, that you would increase our faith, that you would strengthen us, and God, that you would let us see your favor and experience your goodness. God, we praise you and thank you, giving you all the glory through your son, Jesus. Amen.
Well, good morning once again, and thank you for joining us at Christ Community Church. I want to talk to you today about trusting God in, in a toxic culture. Because if, there, if there's one thing that's infected us today, it's a, it's a poisonous, deadly, toxic fear. It, it has permeated our, our homes, the nation, and it has circled the globe. The, the, there is no greater negative toxic influence among friends, family members, and neighbors than that of fear. And yet we need to remember that during this time of, of social distancing, that, that even if we're all quarantined, we have a hope that can't be quarantined. And in fact, I believe that we're living at a time when the, when the gospel of Jesus Christ has, has the potential to spread faster and farther than ever before, when more and more states are, are taking drastic steps to, to contain the spread of the coronavirus, when many people are worried about death and the afterlife, we, we have a living hope, and his name is Jesus Christ. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And so even though we're, we're living in a, in a strange time and we're, and we're doing all that we can to contain the spread of this extremely contagious disease, we have, have to acknowledge that, that although his, all through history there, there have been diseases, all, all, through, all through mankind there's been epidemics and pandemics that have come and gone. And yet in spite of the serious concerns infecting our lives and the loss of so many others, we can find hope in the words of Jesus. In, in, the, in the Word of God, Psalm chapter 91 is one of those passages of Scripture that, that we, we can put our trust in during, during a health crisis such as we're facing today. Re reading verse 1, the Bible says, he who, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. And let's just, let's just stop there, because I, I want to save the best for last. We'll keep, we'll keep the last three verses for dessert. Okay, let's just pray together. Father, we do thank you so much for the amazing imagery of your word, for, for bringing your word to life so that it would, it would stick with us, that we would, would find encouragement in it. God, I ask that you would allow the words of this psalm to sink into our hearts, expanding our understanding of who you are and, and trusting just how big and powerful and good you really are. Remind us to always cast our cares on you trusting that you're big enough to handle them and finding comfort knowing that you care for us. And Lord Jesus, I pray for those who are struggling with faith today, those who are having a hard time trusting you, that they would sense your faithfulness and your goodness today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. The, the emphasis here in Psalm chapter 91 is on the many dangers of life. And it warns of, of traps, of snares, of plagues, tears at night, arrows by day, stumbling over rocks, lions, and snakes, which in all honesty seem so far removed from us today. But in consideration of, of terrorists, snipers, drunk drivers, and the coronavirus, our contemporary lives may be just as dangerous as the ones described in this psalm. And so the, the message contained within these verses is simply that those who dwell in Christ, 
might, might not avoid these unknown dangers, but they will certainly escape the harm, the intended evil consequences. Because it's in times like these, when we're facing a deadly epidemic, that our, that our faith, our, our personal relationship with Jesus Christ, allows us to find peace even as the, the pestilence stalks in the darkness. And so it's not a denial of the facts, but an understanding of the facts. That faith in Jesus Christ transforms us, strengthens us, and protects us because he is our living hope. On the other hand, in stark contrast, the problem for so many in our culture today is that they're losing the battle because their, their minds have been, been polluted by toxic fear. There, there's this constant barrage, uh, this assault of, of toxic thoughts, lies from our spiritual enemy, silently influencing our minds and poisoning our souls. And, and so many of our battles are, are either won or lost in our minds. But verse 9 tells us that as you make the most high your dwelling, as you come face to face with your fears, it's, it's the love of God and the word of God that builds you up. That, that he is your refuge, encouraging you, inspiring you, and perfecting you. That's what the Bible tells us in, in 1 John chapter 4. That there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. He who fears has not been made perfect in love. And so there's, there's this very real struggle, this battle going on in our minds, this, this inner turmoil that can negatively influence us. And if we, if we yield to these toxic thoughts, uh, obeying our lowly earthly nature instead of the Spirit of God, our, our spiritual enemy will keep us from doing what God has called us to do. And so the, the love of God casts out all fear. Our spiritual nature is, is connected to God. But we still live in these bodies of flesh, being fearful of what might happen, fearful of, of walking in faith, fearful of doing what God has called us to do. There's, there's this battle going on, the, the, the storm in our minds. And so, number one, I, I, want, I want to talk to you about surviving the storm. Surviving the storm. You see, for many of us, our, our spiritual enemy doesn't even fight us. In, 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 a, in a physical way. He doesn't need to fight us in the physical realm because e even the whisper, just, just the thought of pestilence, trouble, or disaster is enough to cause us to retreat in fear. Just the thought of that experience or the, or the pain of that past memory is often enough to keep us from extending ourselves in, a, in another relationship or, or getting involved in this or that. And that's understandable because it, it affects us all. Once we've experienced the rejection, the abuse, the loss, the pain, and the fear, once, once we've been through a storm, the memory lives on. When, when it comes to surviving the storm, it's important to know that, that you've been made perfect in love, but also that you've been set free by the love of God. Jesus said very clearly, he said, if, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And so there's this struggle with knowing in our heart that we've been set free. And yet, in our minds, we find ourselves listening to the wrong voices, consulting the wrong sources, and overlooking the fact that nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. The, the, the Bible says that absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And so if, if we're going to survive the storm, some of us need to, need to fire our weatherman. Our, our, our spiritual enemy has been forecasting fear about our future, and, and, and now we're paralyzed with fear. We're, we're staying indoors. We're peering out the windows, wondering what's going on out there, and yet the Bible warns us that whoever watches the wind will not plant. In other words, when you're, when you're sowing seed, you want the wind to work with you. But some of you have given up planting because you, you felt like the wind's been against you your whole life. Others of you feel like everything you do backfires. You know, it just blows up in your face. And it, it wasn't even the wind that was against you. You just, you just felt like it was. But you were listening to voices and looking at evidence that wasn't accurately reflecting your situation. In, in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, Solomon gives us a picture, a, a metaphor of the wind. Because it's, it's an unseen force like your feelings. Like, like your moods or your emotions. 
And so if you're always considering and determining what, what to do based upon your mood or, or how you feel, you're always going to find a reason to neglect your responsibilities. In verse 6, he said, Sow your seed in the morning, and at evening let not your hands be idle, for you do not know which will succeed. In other words, if, if you want to be free, you're going to have to, to go against your feelings. You, you might have to face some resistance, sowing your seed against the wind, because if, if you're watching the wind, if you're waiting to plant, waiting to serve, or waiting to tithe, you never will. You see, when, when, when you're waiting for this or waiting for that, when you're consulting the forecast instead of consulting your faith, you'll, you'll never plant, and you'll never get the harvest in. And, and, and I, wonder, I wonder how many of you today are, are watching the wind. You, you haven't started doing what God told you to do because you're fearful. You're just watching and waiting for some imaginary scenario. But it's keeping you from fulfilling God's word in your life today. The Bible encourages you not to miss the opportunities before you because you, you don't know which will succeed, whether this or that or whether both will do equally well. And sometimes faith requires that we become a little impulsive, you know, kind of like the Apostle Peter. Sometimes for Peter it worked out and other times it worked against him. But he, he didn't wait for the perfect circumstances. Peter didn't wait for the winds to stop blowing. He didn't wait until he'd done all the research before giving his opinion. Before doing this or that. But he trusted God in the moment. You see, he'd learned, and maybe you've noticed, that God's hardly ever early, but he's never late. And so no matter what's the forecast, surviving a storm number two requires that we trust God's timing. Trusting God's timing. Now, this is something that's, that's learned through experience. Because when you're, when you're in it, you're going to be, be struggling with being able to trust when, when he's going to bring you through it. It's, it's hard to see through the other side when you're in, right smack in the middle of it. But, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard for us to wait. You know, faith is hard when you're waiting, especially when you're, you're watching the wind and it's blowing and you, and you can see the effects all around you. It's hard to trust God's timing when he doesn't do something at the moment we want him to or when he leaves us in the heat for just a few seconds too long. But the, but the Bible tells us that we're, we're to trust the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. And so the real test of faith is, is if we'll trust him with his timing, trusting him in the meantime, trusting him while we're waiting, because that's where genuine faith is developed. So some of you know that God often does things in our lives at the, at the most inconvenient times. You know, he, he does things when you might say, well, this, this isn't good. This is, this is, this is really a bad time because I, I'm, I'm just too young or, or too old or too busy and, or I don't have enough money right now. And yet, as we look at the word of God, we find that God often blesses people at what we would consider a bad time, an inconvenient time. You know, kind of like when he raised Lazarus after he'd been dead for four days. Or after John the Baptist was executed. You know, the, the Bible tells us that when, when John's disciples came to Jesus and they told him about the death of John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 14. It tells us that Jesus withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. And so this was a bad time. Jesus just wanted to get away. He was looking for a solitary place, and he crossed over by boat to the other side. Hearing this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. And so when he got there, the crowd was already there waiting. And verse 14 says that when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. It wasn't a good time. It was a bad time. But regardless, Jesus had compassion and healed their sick. Now, the disciples also recognized that it wasn't a good time. And in verse 15, they said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. It's too late, they said. Send the crowds away. But Jesus was up to something. 
He, he was about to do a great miracle. Jesus was going to teach them not, not to lean on their under, own understanding, but to trust them even when it's too late, even when it's inconvenient or if it's just not enough. And so he was about to teach them to, to consult their faith instead of consulting the forecast or, or looking at their watches. And Jesus replied in verse 16, he says, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Well, they reply, well, we, we have here only, a, only five loaves of bread and two fish. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Now, some of you today may find yourself in a, in a kind of a, a similar situation where, where you would say it's, it's, it's already getting late. You know, maybe you've wasted a lot of time. Many years have passed. You've made some bad decisions. And you feel like it's just a bad time to begin trusting God now. But I want you to know that it's a perfect place for God to show up. And Jesus was, was setting the stage. It was, it was a bad time. Admittedly, they were, they were in a remote place. It was already getting late. But it, it was a perfect setup for a miracle. It was just the right time. Because number three, they, they were prepared for a miracle. They were prepared. <clears throat> the stage had been set. They were in a remote place. It was already late. There were too many people and, and too little to feed them all. Everything was prepared for a miracle. And verse 19 says that Jesus gave thanks and broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. And so it was a great miracle. Five loaves of bread and two fish miraculously translated into 12 baskets of leftovers with everyone full and satisfied. Today, there are some of you, you're thinking it's late now because you've been watching the wind, but you've been listening to the wrong weatherman. You're considering everything that's happened. You're worried about what could happen or what might happen because you've been listening to the wrong voices. But the weather was meant to be checked and not watched. You've created your own toxic environment. And the word of God tells us that surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. And so it, it's good to check the weather. It's, it's good to make plans. But as long as you're watching the weather, listening to the weatherman, you're, you're never going to plant. You'll, you'll never reap a harvest and eat and be satisfied. If you're watching the weather, you're, you're living according to your feelings instead of you living by faith. The problem with the wind is that it'll work against you. The wind will, will contradict the word that God spoke to you. And this is what Solomon was talking about when he said, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You see, God is intent on fulfilling his purpose in us. He, he wants to see us trusting him like never before. He wants us to rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And so he pursues us, chasing after us, never giving up on us, wanting to be our refuge and fortress. And he's persistent in his, his desire, hoping that, that, that we'll open up ourselves to his plan. And so he simply allows us to come to the end of our resources so that we're prepared to receive our miracle. In spite of the toxic environment in which we live, the, the fear which is so pervasive, God has set the stage and prepared us for a miracle. And so the question is, are you prepared for a miracle? Can, can you say with the psalmist, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Today, no matter where you are, I want to encourage you not to give up, but to hold on because Wherever you are is not your destination. God sees something in your future that your current situation is blinding you from seeing. 
You, you may be fearful because you've been, you've been watching the wind. You've been listening to the wrong voices. But it's only as you trust him to bring you through the storm that your life will emulate the miracle that's in you. And, and while there may be so much that's toxic in the world around us, you know, t times are difficult. There are a, a lot of voices, a lot of opposition in the world. But God is doing something in us, not, not to crush us or destroy us, but because he has something better in store for you and I. Therefore, we can be confident, trusting that we will overcome this season because we are the church. We, we are the blood-bought bride of Christ. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, I will build my church and the, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so we, we will overcome evil with good. Not, not grieving like those that have no hope, but, but we're going to keep on worshiping together, serving together, giving together, and praying together because we live by faith and not by fear. No, no matter how toxic the environment around us is, God's perfect love casts out fear. And because of his presence, because of the, the goodness of the living God within us, we're, we're not afraid. No, no matter what we go through in the coming weeks, we can have confidence knowing that God loves us that he hasn't forsaken us and he'll, he'll never leave us. In fact, God has said, and this is, this is the icing on the cake, verse 14, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Therefore, today, you and I, we, we can replace the toxins of our culture, replacing fear with truth, surviving a storm, trusting God's timing, and being prepared for a miracle because God, our God, has, has not given us a spirit of fear, <clears throat> but of love and of, of, of power and love and of, of a sound mind. Let's pray together. Lord God and Father, we do thank you so much for giving us a living word and a living hope that even now, right now, is, is reshaping us, transforming us, and renewing our minds by faith. Give us the wisdom and discernment to reject the lies of our spiritual enemy, the, vo the voice of the evil one, and replace them with the truth of your word. I thank you that your word is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, and that we can align ourselves with the truth of your word and see your will being done on earth just as it is in heaven. As you continue praying in, in homes and behind computer screens everywhere, I want you to take a moment and ask yourself, how are you surviving the storm? You know, just be really honest. Have you been listening to, to toxic and negative or fearful words? Or are you trusting God, resting in the shadow of the Almighty? Or are you consumed with fear, often anxious? Or are you trusting in God's timing, his perfect timing? Today, if you find yourself struggling and wrestling with, with toxic thoughts, words, and fears, I'm going to pray and ask God to remind you to reject those toxins and to get into his word and learn to replace them with truth. Those of you who would admit that you, you have some of those areas, that you, you want them gone. You want to replace fear with God's truth. If that's you, would you, wherever you are, just, just lift your hand in prayer. Just, just comment on the chat screen and pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would show us where we've been watching the wind, allowing toxins to fester in our minds, paralyzing us and, and causing us to be prisoners to deceitful voices, words, and signs. Show us everything that's not true, any lies that we tend to believe, and let us take every thought captive, making it obedient to Christ. I pray that as we read your word, and I, I know that it may be a process, but that you would renew our minds and that we would learn to, to think the truth, to speak the truth, and to live the truth. 
Holy Spirit, we ask you to transform our minds and make them better than new. As you keep praying, <clears throat> there, there's a war going on for some of you. It's a spiritual war because you're, you're not completely surrendered to God. And even right now, you, you feel the tug of the Holy Spirit drawing you into a, a relationship with God. Drawing you to God. You're, you're sensing that right now. You're, and, and you're going to have to make a choice. It's, it's, it's a choice between continuing to do things your way or doing things God's way. It's choosing to reject God and, and, the, and the life and death of his son. Or choosing to, to trust that there is a God who loved you so much. That he sent his son Jesus to, to die for your sins. For the things that you've done wrong and the, the things that keep you from being in a relationship with him. If you choose to trust him, to be a part of the miracle that he's prepared for you. Putting your faith in his son, Jesus Christ, who, who shed his blood, died on the cross and rose again to give you new life. When you do, you're, you're going to choose to live your life for him. And when you do, every sin you've ever committed will be forgiven. The Bible says you'll be, become brand new. That you'll be a, a new creation. And you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You'll be born again, transformed, and you'll never be the same. Today, if you choose to surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, asking Him to forgive you of your sins and make you brand new, if that's your prayer today, would you respond on your screen? And would you lift your hands as I pray for you? Just lift your hands in a posture of, of receiving God's grace, receiving His forgiveness, receiving His love, and let's all pray together, everyone out loud, praying together as the family of God in living rooms or places all over, all over this community and around the world. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, pray in Jesus name, I pray in Jesus' name, surrendering to you, surrendering to you asking for your forgiveness. Asking for your forgiveness. Save, me, Save me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. And make me brand new. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a brand new life. Give me a brand new life. A life that belongs to you. A life that belongs to you. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. And transform me. Transform me. As I live for you. As I live for you. And everybody in agreement said, Amen. 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 Let's let's all worship together wherever you are to let's, let's stand to your feet living rooms, wherever you are, not in your car, behind your phones, wherever you are, let's, let's all stand together and let's, let's worship together. Let's celebrate. Church, we're going to sing this blessing song over you today. We pray it will be a blessing to you and in your family. He 
receive the blessing. blessing you and your family and their children and their children in a thousand generations from this time that we get to spend in quietness and rest in confidence and stillness in the Lord. He is blessing you and generations to come. And the Lord is asking that you would be just like that boy and bring your five loaves, loaves and your two fish, and he will multiply it. Surrender it to him, and he will multiply it beyond anything you can possibly imagine. Whether that be your time, whether that be your kindness, whether it be a gift, whether it be financially, Whatever the Lord is speaking to your heart now during this quiet time that he has given to us as a blessing, I pray that we would pour the blessing out on others. Let him use you. Bring to him your loaves and your fish, and he will bless it and multiply it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us online today. We love you, and we miss you being here with us. So I pray that this time was a blessing to you and your family. And until we meet again.